What if tomorrow vanished in the storm? What if time stood still? And yesterday, if once we lost our way, blundering in the storm, would we find yesterday again ahead of us where we had thought tomorrow's sun would rise? Greetings, Seekers of Ascension. The world you see before you today is not the world you are familiar with. In previous iterations of our tale, the white walls have cracked and collapsed. In their place lies this brave new world. <clears throat> I'm Elder Jackos, your storyteller. I will be your guide as we pass into the searing light of a new dawn. With me are those who aspire to ascend, to rise beyond this mundane life. Mages, shifters, seekers, tell the audience who you are and who you're playing. Hey everybody, I'm Ambrose. My pronouns are he or they. You can find me all over the internet as Ann Changeling, because it me, Ann Changeling. And uh, tonight I shall be playing Gabriel Hargrave, whose pronouns are he, him. Hello everybody, my name is Steve. Uh, you can find me on the internet at Voodoo Arcade. My pronouns are he, him. And tonight I am playing uh, Drake Jones, Order of Hermes. Took everything I had and not say punch mage. It's just like you really had to like focus. <laughs> uh, hi, I am Savannah. You can find me online at Miss Miss Emo Fox. Tonight I am playing Roxy, the Avignon for the traditionalists. You did, Rachel. Because the oven timer just went off. Uh, hello. My name is Rachel. You can find me Stolen Friars pretty much everywhere. And tonight I will be playing Sophie, former Hollow One, current Solificati, still goth. Hello, I am Rosie, regular size mom, and tonight I am playing Iris Toll, a virtual adept of the Mechanicus. Hello, I am Ben, Big Dad. I am playing Rudy. Of the Mechanicus. Excellent. <clears throat> Together, this brave cabal acts under the flag of Vorpal Tales, where you can witness dramatic tales of both terror and adventure every evening of every day. We bring you enlightenment in the form of epic storytelling. Come see all we have to offer at VorpalTales.com. You can find our current tales here on Twitch and a past archive at YouTube.com slash C slash Tales. Before we continue this parable, please remember that due to adult language and the adult situations in our story, we have rated an M for mature and strongly encourage listener discretion. Always use consented gaming. And now, Gabriel 2.0, you know what to do. Yeah, shoot everything, obviously. Oh, oh. Always have an recap. extra clip. Yep, precisely. Two extra, actually. I, I like to be prepared. <laughs> It's a needs one on a ash cheek. <clears throat> <laughs> Quick, grab my clip. No, the other cheek. Anyway. <laughs> the armor piercing one. The armor piercing ass cheek. Okay. <laughs> it's a beautiful day in the city. Mr. Drake Jones, Bonnie Flambeau of the Hermetic Order is in a very nice high-rise, knowing he has to check on Roxy soon. He reflects on the changes, the only person with memories of two timelines, and how he's changed. And become quite good at killing Nefandi with his Rave Claymore lightsaber. Jeez, you're so extra, Drake. He's still never caught Lacey, though. He understands that Klopothic achievement requires sacrifice. That was the Gilgal of Leo and Lacey's first death. The second sacrifice was to get a paladin to destroy a righteous cause, which is why Mistridge fell out the way it did. He now aims for the third sphere, forces. The dream speaker Leo calls. Drake lets it go to voicemail. He's got to focus on Vega, who is taking apart the Akashics from the inside. Six months ago, Drake dropped off a few Knight of Solomon, including a kid named Gabriel he helped get off drugs. Three months ago, he dropped off the surviving members of another attack on their coterie, including a traumatized Silificati alchemist named Sophie. The scene switches to Gabriel taking a self-driving Uber to his favorite cafe. 
He plugs into a VR app and loads up some rock music before taking a nap. He needs some rest so he can keep his focus on the war and protecting the righteous. Sophie waits in her room for the timer to ding for a potion brewing in the lab. Her extra copper skin is itchy, but she can ignore that for now. Her pet coyote, sands the vest, which she never had to wear, nudges her for pets. Rudy's in his workshop, grateful that nothing today has started screaming at him and Samarian. I'm sorry that got me, that was cute. Um, and Samarian, or Latin. Iris is in her office, though her look has definitely become more cyberpunk. She's plugged into her own VR headset, waiting for her girlfriend to show up for their coffee date. Roxy arrives. It's two months from her involvement with the Avignon project that turned into a, a more than an abomination. A day later, we collect at the Cairn Tree. It's no longer in Arkham, but a retired water treatment plant in Upper Michigan. Drake is here to meet us, meet with us on an early September afternoon. Sophie takes pains to show up early and provide a wide array of beverages. She's idolized Drake ever since she knew who he was and wants to impress him. Drake also shows up early, making things a bit awkward. Even more awkward is when Gabriel shows up. In this timeline, Sophie and Gabriel have known each other for only three months, but their avatars seem to connect on a very different level. Ayoka is here as well, one of Drake's allies. Gabriel recognizes Drake as the mage who helped him when he was a street kid and stumbles over his words. But Drake clears his throat and all attention is on him now. He admits he interfered in Gabriel's life, but it was necessary. The five of us were chosen, in specific, a thousand years ago. Drake explains other things he's done, the trust he gave Iris, money to help people with. The time he met Rudy 40 years ago and Rudy was transferred to a different department. He observes the green in Sophie's hair and Sophie confesses to a laboratory learning opportunity. Probably better than demons. He mentions his time in MMA arenas with Roxy. Then he lays it on the table. Iris takes umbrage at his crypticness, but there's no real way to say that this is not the first time we're all meeting. He tries to explain about the time travel. Sophie awkwardly asks if he has any memories he cares to share. Ioka says that's not necessary and whispers something to Gabriel. Prime resonates. Gabriel's own avatar manifests. It's original timeline, Gabriel. And he dresses Drake down for screwing up the timeline. He's pissed that he doesn't even exist anymore. Mm -hmm. Aoka mentions that Gabriel summoning a TARDIS also screwed up the timeline. Mm -hmm. Sophie asks who was responsible for the demons and doesn't believe the answer. Drake's only answer is that it was a moment of chaos and he was the snake. Before Ioka snaps Gabriel's avatar, avatar back into his body. Accepting what we've been told is challenging. Iris in particular is pissed off. Ioka turns on a projector showing scenes of our enemy abomination wreaking havoc. Maybe you should listen to what the man has to say. Sophie asks if Drake could share his memories, but the straights went almost... Sophie asks if Drake could share his memories, but the straights would almost certainly make everyone's life miserable if that happened. Nevertheless, this group was important enough that Drake spent 900 years waiting for everyone to come back together. However, he won't reveal anything about individual connections. Drake then reveals the next step of the plan. We're hunting the Fandy. One who has harmed almost all of us directly in some way. He insists that there be no leaders. We're all given 12 hours to decompress and process this information. 
Gabriel is confused and a little disturbed by the idea his avatar has memories he can't access. Either way, we're committed to fighting the Nefandi. Sophie offers to help him try and reconnect with his avatar, though that will be difficult. The whole conversation involves a lot of rather adorable awkwardness between new Gabriel and new Sophie. Rudy invites Gabriel into his lab, and after glaring a bit at Rudy, Sophie follows and watches with admiration as Gabriel takes out one of the hit marks. It's time for dinner. Iris is a bit sulky, but comforted by Roxy. Rudy serves up dinner with a gun in his apron. After dinner, Sophie approaches Drake, disturbed by the idea that she could have been involved in infernalism. Drake reassures her that she was the Sophie she needed to be in the moment, and invites her to tell some war stories about her new life fighting infernalists. Next morning, Rudy wakes up and extremely reluctant to Iris for the meeting. Sophie looks for Gabriel and helps him through a panic attack he's having just outside the door. In the boardroom, Drake waits in combat gear. He reveals the existence of a secret mage school in Italy that was relocated to Mercury to protect it from the Order of Reason. He also discusses the Alibatin city of brass in the same area, which was taken over by Nefandi. This is where they are holed up. It's time to go kill some goddamn Nefandi on Mercury. Points for me. Excellent. Thank you very much. So, you had a night to sleep over it, and you're going to reconvene in the conference room in the morning of the next day. Oh, hi, Hiromi. Thanks for following. Uh, I'm going to ask the pathway to this other planet, do you think it's a path we have to take? Yeah, probably one made out of a precious material of some kind. Mm. Like a ruby. Or, or Sapphires? Garnet. Sapphire, maybe? I can't think of it. Can't put my finger on it. Onyx Path. Is that the one? That's it. Hello, Onyx Path. Oh. Thank you for thank you for rating. Oh, that was bad. My brain was just like, <laughs> why Garnet? <laughs> I mean, I know this is a crossover in the cult universe, but like nobody nobody wants Garnet right now. I can synthesize pretty much anything in that lab. Get out of my lab. <laughs> for last session. My lab! Three of these for last session. Mark them down. Experience? Yep, XP's. Oh, I've got three extra fingers. I mean, if you uh, if you want that in lieu of XP, sure. But they're not on your hands. They're on somewhere very inconvenient. All right, can they be like thumbs? the back of your knee. That is not yeah. as much fun as I was expecting. I'm having flashbacks to everything, everywhere, all at once. <laughs> when yeah. morning arrives, the scene will be yours. But the morning already did arrive. What if it arrives twice? It wouldn't be the first time for you guys. I bet it's Ioka's fault and we should kill her. Do Rudy and Roxy have to do rock, paper, scissors outside of Iris' room again? So he was going to wake her up? You can do it. I don't know. I feel like Iris might be there early because Iris has thoughts. That's what I hear anyway. <laughs> I, yes, Iris has some things that after sleeping on them, uh, she definitely has things that she needs to express to Mr. Jones. And out of what little respect she has for him, she's going to do that privately. No. Oh, ah, okay. Well, I'll let that happen first, then. I don't know if it's respect for Mr. Jones or respect for Roxy not to cause a ruckus. I mean, <laughs> she'll let Jones think it's for him. Fair. Fair. And it is definitely Jones, not Drake. Which I need to sweep. Okay. Mm, uh, yeah. Um, Drake would be doing 
old habits die hard, even though he is no longer um, Kashiana, um, he would still probably start his days with some sort of meditation and physical activity. So he could be meditating before our meeting, before, before going to fight everything. So if you were okay. to yeah, so if you were to approach this room, you just kind of be in a meditative kind of state. Okay. Um, she probably knows where he's staying because she lives here. Um, so you hear a knock. <clears throat> Come in. And Iris Toll enters. She seems a little tense, but she's here. Uh, kind of maintaining the the pose, just being like, opening my eyes. Iris, nice to see you. Hmm, you're not actually seeing me, by the way. Uh. You know, because your eyes are closed, so you could open those or you could keep them shut, whatever. But don't say you're seeing me if your eyes are closed. Come on. Uh, anyway, I've been thinking about a bit of what you said yesterday. And I've reached a couple conclusions. One, you're an egotistical moron. Two, you're suffering from a severe bout of nostalgia for people that don't exist in a timeline that you destroyed. So really, I think you should give us all a break and let me write you a program where you get to do whatever the fuck you want with these people that don't exist and we can all go home. You really shouldn't have told us any of what you did yesterday because you've endangered this timeline, just like you did the other one. So, I don't know, shove your ego somewhere else and figure out what you're doing. end of explanation, end of whatever that was. But you needed to know how I felt if you were going to want me to do anything with you. With that, I will open my eyes clearly. Oh, now you see. Iris to see. Yes. Thank you. You're welcome. Do you have a rebuttal, or can I just leave? No, I have no rebuttal. Nothing he said was incorrect. So do I get to write that program and go? You may write it if you wish to. I would not be using it. But it doesn't change any of the fact of what you said. I was right. I did put you and more things in danger. These are calculated risks that I have to take. Well, there's your ego talking again, but I'll see you at that meeting. Goodbye now. So you'll be joining us? Um, I will be going regardless of how I feel about you because it's my job. I've been doing this since I awoke, okay? I'm not going to turn down a mission like this because I think you're an asshole. I'm glad to hear that. I look forward to working with you, and I'll try to find some place for my ego on the ship. Oh, you also might want to get, like, Ioka's head out of your ass, because I'm pretty sure she's suffocating up there. And then Iris turns away and leaves. Hmm. Rick Jones, been getting dressed down for a thousand years, it just washes <laughs> off like water. <laughs> I was going to go from the uh, perspective of in a thousand years, it's nice to hear very blunt honesty. <laughs> a member of uh, the Order of Hermes is probably a rare thing yet. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, like, in the politics of the council, I'm sure that was relatively refreshing. They yeah. like Iris. <laughs> so. Me too, bro. The meeting convenes, unless anyone else wants to dress Drake down before it. <laughs> <laughs> Iris I opens think... the door, there's a line. <laughs> <Just> here, <right? laughs> oh, 
I think Sophie's head would explode if she did what I was just told to drink. <laughs> I was gonna say, Rudy's probably grilling outside preparing breakfast. Uh, I, I think that uh, uh, Sophie, uh, who I'm really upset with myself, but I didn't realize I could pun her name into Sophie Lificati, uh, has a real Wow, I'm disappointed in you too. <laughs> I know, right? And myself. <laughs> and Ambrose. Um, Sophie's got a really, uh, complicated coffee maker. There's, like, Alembics and Ebrics and, uh, French presses involved, but she swears it is the best way to drink coffee. I love the fact that the coffee maker continues through all the timelines. <laughs> <laughs> the coffee I mean... maker's not going anywhere. Coincidentally, Rudy's coffee maker makes the ones you get in, like, a hotel room look fancy. <laughs> Sophie keeps trying to like steal it or hide it or break it and somehow it always comes back. Uh, coincidentally, Roxy just has a stockpile in a storeroom somewhere of Rudy's favorite coffee maker and anytime it gets broken, <laughs> she just replaces it. I was like, matter of four, I can just remake it from any. <laughs> just... Yeah. What do you get from the man with matter for? It's the thought that counts. <laughs> yeah, I wonder point. what I wonder what this timeline's equivalent of a houseboat full of broken telephones is. <laughs> uh house it's probably a bunch of guns. Plane. It. It's probably I, a bunch of guns. I would That's actually bunch. think uh VR headsets that were made during the early days of VR, uh, before we got VR net neutrality. Uh, and so they're all proprietary. They don't connect to each other, but Rudy has figured out how. Uh, no, nah, that's that's more Iris's thing. Okay. Something with Zeppelins. Oh. I was like, a whole bunch of, of, of loaded guns? I don't know. So Zeppelin parts would be fun. I like Zeppelin parts. All right. So, Greg Jones, bring the meeting to order. How are we getting to this invisible moon? Order. Nice. <laughs> I know it. I know what Ben's doing. I already know. <laughs> <laughs> um. So, uh, is everybody? I, I'm assuming everybody is on time. Did anyone not? Is anyone not coming? Is anyone not wanting to work? Is anyone not on time? I am, again, exactly on time. Coming through the exterior wall <laughs> with a plate of, like, grilled sausages and eggs. And a salmon board. A salmon board? Ooh, I like salmon. I make sure Drake drinks my coffee and not Rudy's coffee-flavored battery acid. <laughs> Thank you, Sophie. All right. So everyone's here? Yeah. Everyone understand the severity of what we're about to do? Is everybody okay with the information presented to you yesterday? I mean, it's, it's a lot. You're asking us to believe a lot, but I don't think that you would have told us what you told us without a good reason. Eh. It doesn't change what we still have to do. Yeah. And honestly, it wasn't a lot. You haven't given us a whole lot of information about the actual mission. About the actual mission? Yeah. Like, I know we're going to the... Uh, we're going to try to get some data and research journals and notes and all of that. But what can you tell us about the facility? What is your plan of entry? That, those nitty gritty things. Yeah. Do we have <laughs> any pre-information about this facility? So I thought you were gathering your thoughts. Well, I'm trying uh, to think. No. No, okay, that's fine. I just wanted to make sure. 
Well, no, what I was going to say was, uh, what actually happens is Ioka steps in front of you, ushering you to one of the seats where everyone else is sitting. Oh, okay. I will be fielding any and all questions from you guys from now on. Drake here is going to get what he wants. He wants to be just one of you. Now he is. You can't run a war. You can't run one of the most important missions in a war like a buddy cop movie. That's how you break reality. Oh, right. You already did that. I'll be in charge of this squad now. And you all. I would like to you. use forces to stop sound from coming out of a Yoka. Yeah, it doesn't work. Fuck. Uh, Order of Hermes. She's already got five dots in that. Slightly beats you for now. Uh, sorry, hold on one second. Okay. PDFs always love to crash on my computer at the worst time. That's why I like hardcovers. So, uh, This unit, most of you, every time she says most of you, she looks at Iris, <laughs> uh, need to do better this time. It's not your fault, this version of you, but you should at least be aware of the stakes. It's not just the stakes for this world. It's the stakes for yourselves. You, points at Sophie, you lost your entire family to the enemy and were on a mission to spite God and ascend and bring the world to freedom. That's ruined now because of your choices in the previous timeline. You need to learn to control your curiosity. Sometimes it's not okay to touch, steal, grab, and swallow everything you might think think might make you better until you know for sure. That's how you break the world. You, points at Rudy. You were a happy-go-lucky old man sworn off violence and only loved baseball. You like to make toasters. Now look at you. Sometimes your inventions can heal and not harm. You, points at Gabriel. You were finally finding some peace with yourself and new love to replace endless heartbreak. Sometimes you have to protect yourself, too, because if you protect everyone around you by ignoring yourself, you hurt them just as much as you would have if you hadn't protected them at all. You, points at Roxy, you'd found a new pack and new friends, and it just rescued your oldest and dearest friend from the enemy. A were-raven, two were-sharks, a were-bear, and a were-cat. What a pack that would have been. Are you Sometimes, done? as long as you have a good plan and a good reason, extreme risks are necessary. Looks at Iris. Are you done? Ignores you. Looks at Iris. I'm sorry. You tried to do the right thing, but none of these guys would listen to you. I hope they do this time. Sometimes it's okay to give your cup control and let your magic run wild when it's in the service of a righteous cause. Or love. Looks over at Roxy. The most of all, you need to understand a lesson I didn't learn until it was too late. This is a war. And in a war, the people you trust are the ones to the left and to the right. All the people in this room, brothers and sisters, not forged by blood, but in blood. Because in a war, just like in a family, sometimes that's all that matters, not the people giving orders. I know you can't look at your pasts and look at what happened on the other side and look at what used to be because it would break everything. But I looked at it and I can see it because I wasn't involved. Uh, and I wish we could bring you back to who you were, but we can't. So what we can do is the best with what we have with who you are now. And there is no going back. And most of you, looks at Roxy, wouldn't even want to go back. I have no interest and didn't have any interest in knowing about what happened before. But you seemed to have taken that into your own hands. Um, at this point, the white knuckle grip that she has on the table has cracked the table where she was sitting. You might be in the service or friends or colleagues with Drake. I don't even know what you do, but you have no business making everyone else here feel, I don't know, whatever they might be feeling about their past lives. That was not your place. I don't know. I feel pretty good. I apparently did nothing wrong. I'm pretty happy with who I am right now. 
What I am is in charge because I kill Nefandi and so do all of you now. I think we're ready for the mission details. We're going to Moo. Yeah, it's a great name, I know. Ooh. It's the hidden invisible moon of Mercury. There's a station there that's been overrun by the Nefandi since 1995 when the technocracy helped the Nefandi overrun it. It orbits around the burning city, the eternal burning city of brass. Where the Ali Batin used to rule once, but we're overthrown by that self-same enemy. That's where your altar, Roxy, was created. We need to know everything about it. How it was done, where it was done, why it was done, where it's at, what its mission is, what its purpose is, so that you and Drake can fucking kill it. Before it kills more of us. And it looks at Sophie when she says that. Well, what? Your squad was wiped out by the abomination. Except for you and one other person. Your last cabal. Oh, okay. I thought she was making another dig at me for being infernalistic Jason in another life. She actually hasn't mentioned that yet. I mean, enough people have dropped hints that Sophie's pretty <laughs> sure she's doing better now than she was. So, when do we leave? As soon as the ship is prepped and ready. What other questions do you have, the rest of you? I believe Iris was asking for any sort of tactical information you may have, as opposed to the overall details already provided. Is there sub-levels, security systems? Last many, time we knew what the staff? inside of that facility looked like was in 1995. That's what I, okay, that's... Yeah. Almost 30 years. We're sure the Nefandi have done terrible, horrible things to it. And I'll just kind of look back. Unfortunately, Iris, I don't think we have any recon going in. We are the recon and the team that has to take care of it. Oh. So Sophie? Can I be excused? Because I'm all in on this mission and... If it's going to be dangerous, I want to get some potions screwed up. Of course. And I have a question. Who's actually in charge? I am is in charge of delivering to? the missions now because Drake I, wants to just I'll, be an equal. Yeah, group. I'll kind of, yeah, so I'll kind of like, I, I at the end of the day. Okay, cool. You can tell he's kind of like, like he's a little uncomfortable at that, but that was the, that was what was said, so, by him. Just give me something to shoot. Um... Any, yeah, um, how long until we're ready to go? Out of character. You asking, like, the ship or, like, the players? I'm asking you. Oh, uh, they would have told you it would take about 10 hours to prep the ship. From right now or from last night? Yeah, from now. Oh, so, okay. this evening. It's very early. Okay, perfect. All right. So, about 10 hours, any prep work you need to get done, let's go ahead and I'll get it done. He's going to start building parts he might need because I can no longer fabricate them as I need them on the fly. <laughs> hmm. uh, Roxy is going to be meeting with Mateo um, to make sure he knows all the ins and outs of running the Jantry when she's not here. Gabriel's going to prep his armory. I, I have sent a wish list. Uh, Iris will check on Roxy to make sure that she's okay. She hasn't broken a table in a little while. 
Um, <laughs> so, you know, it's a little concerning. Uh, and uh, I can't really think of a whole lot of prep Iris would have to do since they can't actually give her any information about what she needs to prepare. So whatever she does is going to be on the fly anyway. Um, you would probably just find Roxy in the meeting hall with Mateo, who you would know is like one of her best friends since he came to uh, to the safe haven. So you kind of just hear her going over like make sure the kids actually go to their classes and dinners they're here you're also gonna have to find someone who can actually cook because rudy's also coming with me and blah 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 blah, blah, blah. uh iris walks up and slips her arm around roxy and waits until the conversation is over um she finishes up talking to mateo and then like like looks up hey hey how are you? Frustrated. With anyone or anything in particular? Um, a mixture of a lot of things. Like, Drake was all like yesterday, like you shouldn't know anything about your past or former alternate universe self. And then Ioka this morning and bunch of bullshit when honestly, all she needed to tell us was this is a mission. I don't feel like she needed to lay out everyone's flaws in a life that never existed essentially like i honestly don't even think drake should have told us any of this in the first place no he shouldn't have he should have laid out the mission and not let his ego get in the way and just... i mean i've known drake for eight years she like does like some mental math <laughs> eight years and you know if he thought it was that important, why didn't he say anything then? And... I don't know. We've been through a lot. I'm how I am because of him. I run this place because of him. And now I'm just kind of wondering how many ulterior motives he had. And it just kind of hurts. Because now I just kind of feel like a used plaything. Like I'm... I don't know. <sighs> well, and uh, she... I don't know. However, Roxy normally likes to be comforted, massage your hands, hold you, whatever. Um, says, you're you because you're you. Don't give him the credit for any of what you are. I've decided to do that, not give him credit for who I am. Makes this a whole lot easier. You're right. So, I guess at least we can know that you were smart in both timelines. That's right. <laughs> she, like, boops your nose. <laughs> <sighs> Let's just, I don't know, spend the next however much time we have left just not focused on the bullshit. Let's just not die. And, uh, I don't know. Do you want to go into town? Yeah. Have dinner? Yeah. yeah. Let's, go. Let's go have a little date. Okay. I'd like that. Okay. 
Roxy calls like a self thingy, Uber, whatever. <laughs> uh. Are you going all the way into Chicago? 60 miles. 30 miles to the next actual town. You are in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. Oh, that's right. We could go into VR. Like, she could literally pull you into VR to go somewhere nice. Physically. Mm-hmm. You take Rudy's car, you ask. That's true. Um... Yeah. No, Roxy was like, I... I want to go out and feel something before we literally go to space. That's fair. That okay? I will borrow Rudy's... Uh, he was working on a car that gets where you're going before you get there, which I... Have time. I don't have time. I don't have time. <laughs> I'll borrow Rudy's car. Uh, okay. <laughs> oh, that's an old Rudy invention. This one flies. I can I can handle that. We borrow a flying car. Yeah. And I guess we go to Chicago at that point and find a car. Yeah. Hey. Okay. About the rest of you. I sent you what I was going to do. Yeah, Sophie's in the lab all day. Like I said, I'm making parts to construct tools I will need in the field. Um, Because, okay. yeah. Also trying to figure out a way to make premium weapons. What makes it a premium weapon? No, premium is a technocratic thing. Ah, uh, you mean their fuel source. Got it. Uh, I'll, I'll send you what I'm thinking of. Leaves two of you. I thought I had mentioned mine. The um, getting all the weapons ready and stuff. You gonna do that all day? Hmm. That's a good question. Uh oh, probably it could take not. ten hours to clean weapons. You don't have to. It doesn't I mean, necessarily take that long. Not so much cleaning as preparing which ones he what, will need to bring. What spheres do you have? Ew. Uh, <laughs> scrolly scroll. Uh, time of four, correspondence of three, life of three, and forces of two. With life and forces, you could enchant some pretty gnarly ammunition. Yeah. Uh, also with time, so they get hurt before you pull the trigger. That's fair. Also correspondence, so if all I do is shoot the bullet, it will be where it's supposed to be. How much correspondence do you have again? Three. That's probably not enough of what I'm thinking, but like you shoot one zombie and every zombie in the building goes down. Ah, that would be so cool. I think you would need correspondence for to make that happen, though. You craft uh, yeah, a it's diary. Okay, Rudy, we're on the same page. I will do all of those things. Can you craft a dire bear? Not enough life, I don't think. Not enough life? That's unfortunate. Do we have well, a life mage anymore? Luckily, we have a uh, dire bear GM that raided <laughs> us with a party of five. So they'll be joining us on our trip to space. Hello, Dire Bear GM. Welcome again, Dire Bear. Amazing. Hello. I should have seen that coming. Right? So seriously, do we have a life mage anymore? No. I think Sophie I'm has... the closest. Sophie has three? Mm -hmm. Two? No. Uh, I have mind four, matter four, correspondence one, and life one. Uh-oh. Oh, well, that's, that's going to make what life. you wanted real interesting. Yeah, so it's Gabriel. Yeah, no, because the idea is, like, that's why it's not something that you drink, it's something that goes on your skin. So that way I could take advantage of, like, the matter and not the yes. life. Mm. Yes. Wait, our nice. Archmage doesn't have, like, five dots in life? It's not an Archmage. Are you talking about Drake or Ioka? Yeah, Drake. 
Okay, because Ioka is not going to space. Oh. All my life went Ioka is Ioka's the mage who sits on the ground acting like an asshole to make you all unify in what do you mean acting? against her long enough to not to, to be a team. Uh, um, is it me? Yeah. That's okay. what you might what to go over. His turn to say what he's doing in the meantime. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Um, I just want to do two things. I want to go talk to Ioka. Um, and then I want to, uh, just do as many preemptive, like, defensive spells that I can. So, like, protection from forces, um, is there anything I can put wards up against? Depends how much you want to hurt yourself. Because there is a limit on how many simultaneous spells you can have running before the paradox starts to steamroll. Oh, word. Uh, what's the limit? Like three. Wait, what you at? Four dots? Uh, a verite, four dots. Five. I can have five things up at a time? One plus verite. Okay. Now that would include the on-the-fly spell you're casting in combat. That counts on that list. If you uh, go over that... So my, so so my sword is going to count towards that, basically? Right, so four also, now plus whatever you're doing on the fly at any given time. For every two effects you are sustaining, to borrow a term... Uh, you get a dice penalty or a difficulty penalty of one. Yeah. For every two, so at your second one. For every one, two. So at your second one, you are. Uh, I don't know. Okay. Up to the GM. If you have four spells running, you're at minus two until you hit six spells and you're at minus what? three. Okay, so it's on the second. Not. Okay. Okay. Yes. That's how I do it, yeah. So you'd be at minus two if you have four things running, Drake. Um, uh,. I'm assuming three dots is about the level to have a good defense against something. Yes. All right. So help the help the, the newbie mage out. Uh, which one would be the best one? If I only had to pick one, what's the best thing to have a defense against? Correspondence, prime, entropy, or forces? Uh, entropy or forces? Everything that's trying to attack you is probably forces. That was my thought, but I yeah okay. Um, if thing is hot, I can't you answer it, that because it would be spoilers. <laughs> if thing is hot, you make it cool. If right. thing move fast, you make it stop. Yeah. Right. Uh, I'm trying to construct uh, essentially potions and lotions of uh, mind and matter. Do they smell good? Yes, they do. Okay. Um... I, I infuse them with uh, little Black Phoenix Alchemy Lab imp ears. So they always smell pretentious and gothy. Oh, I've got a thing for the group that I want to do. I would like to cre uh, create devices for each person to convert the ether that's all around us into breathable oxygen for everyone to use. Awesome. A well-established road in the Sons of Ether called Ether Breathing. Uh, instead of... Dip Defense. Entropy could probably be used as a boot, as a boost, right? Like just to you, generate. You can, you can luck create luck. good luck. Yes. Yeah. Um. Then you know what? Since I have four dots in entropy, that's what I will do. I will focus on a ritual that get gives all of us um some sort of boost or luck um on the mission, so that we're all getting a benefit. Um. But then again, like I said, before I get into the meat and potatoes of that, I want to go talk to Ioka. Okay. She's still in the conference room. Uh, is she alone? Yeah, by now everyone's left. Okay. <clears throat> so what was that? What was what? Why did you do that? Because they'll need it. They need to be focused on what's in front of them, not what's behind them. I know you're trying to get them all... No, 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 you misunderstand. I don't mean they need a kick in the ass, I mean they literally needed to hear that because I scried what was going to happen, and I can't tell you because of the paradox, because you were in the old timeline too. 
but they literally needed to specifically that. I know they're all pissed at me, and I don't care. That's what's necessary for them to unify them in the moment, is to make them all hate me and have one thing in common. Fine. Because I don't want any of them to hurt like Gabriel did in his original timeline. I don't want any of them to die, especially you. You're my best friend, and I'll do whatever I have to do to keep everyone in line so the chances of that happening this time are as low as possible. I don't care what they think of me as long as this time you survive and this time we win. Imagine what would happen if you fractured. Look at Rudy. 40 years on the front line of the war. What do you suppose would happen if we don't save his career? 50 at least. At least a little bit. 50, sorry. If we don't say his curiosity that he claims not to have, he's lying, he's Rudy. At least a little bit. Maybe he'll dig into his own past. Maybe he'll find out what the Avatar Storm was, star, Avatar storm was and try to recreate it to stop the war. That's what a broken veteran would do. Look at Roxy. What if everything goes terribly sideways? Or what if Iris gets desperately hurt and Roxy says maybe if we could just fix it and go back, things would be better. So maybe we tell Roxy there is no Iris for her on the other side, so she wants nothing to do with it. Look at Sophie. Sophie doesn't get that warning. What's she going to do next time? When some demon hands her a glowing green stone and says this will help you kick God's ass. And look at Gabriel. You remember what happened to Gabriel. No gods, no masters. We need to win. We do. And I gave them as much as they needed. You can say that they all needed those things. But now you're toying with people. I would say that Iris is right. You might have given them too much. But it is what it is now. All I know is, you know me, that's my thing. I see the future. I gave them what the future says they need. To nudge the odds ever in our favor. Do me a favor. Take it easy on them for a little bit. They I promise have... I will, at least on Iris. She smirks at you. Yeah. I like I like her. Good for you. I have some advice for you. Now you've given me some advice. What is that? Keep an eye on Rudy. He's a wild card. He's got a short fuse. <laughs> and then Bob laughs. <laughs> Take Iris's advice. It's usually wise. Don't try to be just one of them so much that you don't make a choice for them when it becomes necessary. You're still their leader. Don't get in Roxy's way when the rage comes out. Unless you want to be Rudy in the alternate timeline. Everyone wants to be Rudy in the alternate timeline. And be careful with Sophie. She doesn't think you're equals yet. This time she thinks you're like the one to look up to. Even two words might be enough to cause damage if you're not cautious. That's my advice. It all sounds like very good sage advice. I appreciate your input. I don't in. like this one, Drake. The odds are bad. You've seen it. I didn't tell them because they don't need to know. You've seen the failure percentage chance on this mission. I don't like it. So I am being harder than maybe I need to be. And if she does something you know she would only do if she was supremely worried, take this. And pulls one of her two swords out from behind her back and hands it to you. And give me yours until the mission is over. Or take them both, whichever. Why would you take her swords? Yeah. <laughs> because they are much more potent than yours. Uh, hold on, I've got it somewhere. Oh, okay. Wait, uh, more potent than lightsaber claymore? Yes. Jesus. Uh, uh, Ioka.
Okay. Uh. She has two blades, wisdom and temperance. She's trying to hand you temperance. Uh, its damage is strength plus four lethal. Uh, it allows you to use each sword if you take two once per turn at full dice pool as if you had celerity, but you can only use weapon maneuvers with the primary wet hand. You can't use maneuvers with the secondary. Temperance grants you plus two to any roll to deflect an attack from yourself or anyone within reach. And that blade ignores two points of armor. All armor, including magical force reduction. Um... Also, it causes uh, aggravated damage to any non-mage and non-human. So, technocrats, cyborgs, nefandi, uh, shifters don't hit Roxy, <laughs> vampires. Okay, I mean, yeah, if they're better weapons, I'll take them. Wow. She hands you one, <laughs> not both. Uh, no, 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 no. I mean, if you ask, she'll, she'll hand you wisdom. <laughs> Is, isn't Roxy a, a mage now, though? Also, it's true. Yeah, Roxy is also a mage, also so it would not get. Mage. It would do lethal damage to Roxy. Makes sense. I'm five things. <laughs> I'm this. I'm mini. this mini. <laughs> but uh, basically, yeah, it just means she, these weapons were forged for her by her master. But if forces, I, you know, uh, but if I have both, I get to attack with both. Yes, so uh, and the other one on has the a different one? bonus. Since the other one, instead of uh, giving you a plus two to repost, gives you a plus two to uh, uh, overcome blocking maneuvers. So one helps you block, one bypasses blocks. Cool. No. Um. Also, they're both unbreakable. Okay. There's a lot. Okay. Um. I'll send it to you. Yeah. I'll, I guess I'll, I'll just say, if you're going to give me one, how about the pair? And then I'll take mine. And since they're, and since they're visiting us, we'll, 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 we'll give them a shout out. Uh, you can actually find these weapons in the newest book for Mage of the Ascension that was kickstarted by Onyx Path, Lore of the Traditions. Yeah. I'll be that book too, if they're still here watching. I know a lot about them, because I wrote them, and this character. So yes, she will give you both, if you ask. Perfect. I will make a sword trade with Ioka. Okay. Uh, last thing is I'm just leaving and just kind of a reminder. Ioka, I know you have seen things and possibility of failure with this mission. I've reached the point now before going back. We are, the screen team is back together. This is a moment of transition. Things will not be clear. Things will be confusing. I have no more insight to give going forward. Don't think you have all of the answers either. I don't. I'm flying blind here. It's a brave new world. No one's <sighs> been on that station in 30 years. Nothing but the Nefandi. Whatever you find there is going to be a nightmare. Just, just remember, Event Horizon, don't let that happen to you. She winks at you. I wasn't thinking about Event Horizon. Okay. <laughs> and I will leave from there. I will go cast protection from Sam Neil. We don't need eyes to see where we're going. That was creepy. I don't like it. <laughs> Creepier when Sam Neill delivers the line. <laughs> well, now no, I want to watch the movie. effects in that part of the movie take you out of it. Like, thonk. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing takes you out of that movie. It's a perfect cinematic masterpiece. Oh my god, the sound effects at the end. I was like, really, this is ruined it for me. Right, you? <laughs> ben may have very different feelings about this movie than the rest of us. Event Horizon. I hated it. <laughs> Event glorious. Horizon is I like the first half. The second half, I hate it. Ben's okay. first bad take. No, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> Can you tell me to shut up? My takes will only get worse. Um, Let's hear about this date. Oh, go ahead. Sorry, Roxy. Oh, I was. Uh, uh, that's fine. We can hear about the date because all I was going to say is like, after the date, 
I do this. But Care about that day so I can answer side mist. Oh, well, fine. Uh, so we fly in Rudy's flying car, truck, vehicle, uh, to Chicago and find a nice Thai restaurant. Um, because secretly Rosie and I don't get enough Thai in our lives. So here we are. We're living it out uh, virtually on the internet. <laughs> um, yeah. We probably get like a little corner booth. Um, I don't know. How, how does uh, Iris like her spice? <laughs> she gets some kind of mild sweeter curry uh roxy definitely orders a super spicy uh yellow curry because uh, that's the best don't hate me uh well you're and... gonna have to brush your teeth before she kisses you but... oh yeah no no that's fine <laughs> iris is just as cowardly as rosie is in real life <laughs> She probably is a better spice tolerance than I do. Mine is non existent. Don't worry. When I come visit and we have Thai food, uh, you won't have to worry about that because obviously we won't, we won't be mooching on each other. True. So yeah. <laughs> you can eat all the spicy food you want. <laughs> um, so after they've ordered and stuff, um, Roxy seems to like let out this breath that she was probably holding for like a really long time. <laughs> what do you think it's going to be like out there? Uh, dangerous, harrowing. So we should enjoy this while we can because you know we're gonna have to do the job yeah and well it's weird going out there is so I can find out information on the entire reason that this version of me referring to, you know, being now mage, changeling, mummy, best it <laughs> exists. But I'm also really scared about what we'll find out. Knowledge is power? I mean... Knowledge like, is power. I mean, like, in VR, it's all uncategorized and just all over the place. You'd be surprised what you can do with proper indexing and yeah. just knowing what something is. So what if it's stronger than me? The traditionalists didn't have all the information when they put all of this together. Uh, she what if they didn't make me strong enough she scoots closer to you like until she was almost in your lap and she's like we'll kick its ass don't worry it doesn't have me that's true she like leans her head on your shoulder all we can do is our best. You, me, Rudy, and now Gabriel and Sophie and Drake. Jones, he's Jones. <laughs> Jones. Jones. I wonder... I wonder if this is how some of it fell together last time. Like, 
we all kind of came together haphazardly. Like I know in the background, Jones has been pulling the strings like forever since essentially all of us were born. Which is disgusting. A little bit. I kind of look at him a little bit differently now than, than the guy that I've been friends with and fighting alongside for ages before my pack got obliterated in the war. But... It'll... We can still do this. You can still put on a uh, quote-unquote uh, nice face uh, <laughs> and work with him. I don't know. I might go Stone Cold Bitch. We'll see. You can still work with him even if you're a Stone Cold Bitch. Oh yeah. I'm not worried about me. I want to make sure you're okay. I'll be fine. I got you, right? Damn straight. Not too straight. <laughs> she leads in and kisses you, and if anyone is giving them a look, flips them off. <laughs> um, probably after Ty, they, like, find, like, a dance club or something and kind of just, like, sweat it out. <laughs> Um, when they get back to the compound, um, Roxy will take a couple of hours before she settles into bed, um, and using my mummy powers, I am going to create a couple of amulets for everyone to use on the mission. hand them out now or later the flight will be leaving before anyone sleeps all night oh, okay. by the time you get back from chicago you probably got four hours before the ship leaves okay uh knowing that then yeah she'll uh once she's finished it finished all of them she will um with about an hour to spare so she'll she's gonna have minimal sleep if any uh she'll be fine um uh, so about an hour before the planned takeoff is when she will go to everyone. So that way she's not waking up anyone who actually got sleep. Um, <clears throat> so she's going to go to Drake first. And lightly knock on his door. Uh, around what time is it? Uh, about an hour before we would have been taking off for the mission. Uh, I don't know what time it would have been, but she that, was trying to like give people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I mean, that, that that's that's good. Okay. Um, would my warding be done by this point? An hour before we leave. Just timeline wise. Tyler. Uh. It could be any point within those four hours, but yeah, an hour is fine. Okay, I just all right. So I'm done doing those spells. Like, totally. oh yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, then yeah, come, you're kind of here, like come in. Cracks it open. Uh, she has like a couple of like necklaces spilling out of her pocket. <clears throat> Drake um, is doing a handstand and push-ups. Hey, show off. Just staying limber. That's one way to put it. Um, I I made you something. Um, she like kind of pulls out all the necklaces and like some thumbs through them. Um, pulls out one. Um, lays it on his nightstand. Um, this will help you with. I don't really know sword stuff. I know you use your sword, so, um... Pointy end, sharp side. Yeah. Kind of how it so, works. So, uh... <laughs> this will, 
um, hone it a little bit better for you. Thank you. Do I need to use it like a whetstone? Or just... No, you just wear it. Of course. Um... And I just want to say, um, you're one of my oldest friends now, after everything. Um, but I also want to be honest with you uh, and let you know that I'm hurt by everything that's come up. And the fact that you've been sitting on a lot of this at least with me, for the last eight years. Um, you're still my friend. I still love you. But um, there's going to be some healing for us. Um, obviously not doing a handstand anymore. Like, <laughs> kind of walking up, being like... Uh, kind of takes that all in. I completely understand that level of information, especially after so long. It would be unreasonable to expect anything different. I don't want to make excuses. Uh, it was not fair to you, not fair to any of them. Um, but to you especially for so long. I'll just let you know. When you wait that long. To bring your friends back together. You have to look at the web. As a whole. Not as a single strand. I didn't want to cut the web. Where it was only you. But where all of us came together. That doesn't make it easier, and it shouldn't. No. But, like I said, you're still my friend. I still love you. Just know that some things are going to be looked at in a different light. But that doesn't change that I'll always fight. For you and with you. I'm glad to hear that. Okay. I hope to earn back your full trust in time. Of course. I got a few more of these <laughs> to pass out. Can um, I recommend five sets of ten of the handstand push ups? Keeps everything, the shoulders especially. Uh, I think strong. I got um, plenty of exercise last night. Okay. She winks and then she slides out the door. <laughs> that washes right over Drake. <laughs> <laughs> okay. At least she's keeping her cardio up. That's good. <laughs> um, next, <laughs> uh, she'll go to Gabriel's room. Light rapping on the door. Who is it? Roxy. Come in. Um, hey, uh, I know it's only been a few months. You've kind of just been, you know, here protecting things. Anyway, um, I can make these now. <laughs> It shows pocket full of necklaces. Um, they're not just pretty. Uh, she'll um, place it on his bed. Um, I know your specialty is like guns and stuff. Uh, so um, this will just make your precision a little bit better for the mission 
Thanks. I appreciate that. You're welcome. And um, I um, I hope that um, you've been okay with everything that went on, um, especially with your avatar and stuff. Yeah, I've, uh, that was interesting. But, you know, I, he's back where he belongs, and I'm here, and we're going to space. Uh, yeah, I mean, I know some people grow up with that fantasy of, you know, wanting to be an astronaut and, like, turn into like the final frontier and stuff like that um I wasn't one of those kids uh I don't know if you were Rudy probably was um but yeah um um I'm just gonna get out of here I, I will see you when the ship takes off <laughs> she <laughs> slides out the door <laughs> Well, that was weird. I hope she's okay. Uh, she'll go to Sophie's room next. Um, light knock. I tried faster, you son of a bitch. Come in. I hope you don't talk to you. I don't know. I better not say that because I don't know if Sophie's family's alive in this reality or not. Anyway, um... <laughs> I don't even know. They're probably all dead. <laughs> um, hey, uh, Sophie. Um, pulls out necklace amulet. Uh, I'm making everyone one of these. Um, it's one of the new powers I have. Um, this is just basically going to make you a little bit tougher. Oh. Um, uh, less squishy. <laughs> Uh, that will probably blend really well with the Quicksilver Flak Jacket that I'm working on. And she holds up, uh, 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 what are they called? The little glass beakers, but they're not beakers, they're cylindrical. Wow. Um, anyway, it's, Test tube? Uh, no, but, like, bigger. I think they're still called test tubes. No. Or graduated cylinders? Yes. That's it. Graduated mm -hmm. cylinder. Um, also, big old graduated cylinder. Flak jacket. Are you crazy? We're going to Mercury. It's gonna just start. It's gonna poison your own blood. That's what the alchemy is for. You're gonna poison your own blood. <laughs> to be fair, when you for. said that, I thought you were just gonna make a Quicksilver cosplay jacket. So, <laughs> so it's That's a graduated cylinder of very silver, sparkly liquid. Uh, yeah, so if I did this right, and I'm pretty sure I did, you just have to, like, it's like a lotion, and it should, uh, toughen you up as well. So, that would actually work really well together. Thank you. Um, so yeah, so if that doesn't work, this definitely works for you. Um, so, um, h how are you after everything? I mean, it's a lot to take in. And I know that uh, they don't want me to know anything about who I used to be, but um, they let slip enough. I don't know if Drick wants me to think that I was somehow involved with demons, or if I actually was, but uh, I don't know. I feel like I'm probably doing better now than I was. Um. Maybe. I've also, after talking some stuff out last night, I've chosen not to dwell on it because that person literally never existed. So. Yeah, I mean, I grew up hearing stories about Drake, about all the Nefanti he killed. And that's what inspired me really to, like, you know, once my awakening happened, um, fight Nefandi too. So, 
I don't know, maybe I I will find out, you know, that old saying, never meet your heroes. Maybe he'll turn out to be a total asshole, but um, um he chose me and that's special and you know, even even if he hadn't said what he said, I'd still be here. Because I still fight Nefandi, because it's the right thing to do. True. Um I also just want to kind of remind you that um Yes, Drake's a, I don't know, even know what the proper word is, a grandmaster, master, on the council, um, but Drake's still a, a, a person, um, and I get all the wonderful things that he's done, um, but just don't put him too high on a pedestal, because that's not him fair to him or to you in Great. the long run. Uh, may just learn that lesson multiple times. So, uh, but thank you. I appreciate it. I'm just also trying to look out for my friend. So. I appreciate it. Thank you. Um, see you in like an hour, uh, for the ship. <laughs> uh, yeah, I should have a, a bunch more potions and lotions ready. Awesome. That'll be, uh, probably extremely useful. Um, She'll slip out uh, and then uh, go run over to where she anticipates Rudy to be, which may be in the kitchen making breakfast one more time because he just can't help himself. I'm actually prepping space lunch. Oh. <laughs> oh, are we going to get to eat astronaut ice cream? Oh, shit. I forgot to bring it down. <laughs> um, no, we're not. We're not cowards here. <laughs> um she'll uh hear you know rummaging and stuff in the kitchen um and um hey uh morning afternoon evening i don't even know what time it is anymore um shit this is terrifying anyway um rudy pulls out the second to last necklace um this will help you with your your focus um how do you feel about going out there again i assume it's why they invited me here in the first place uh storyteller has rudy been to mercury in this timeline Nope. All right. That's a stronghold of the enemy. Okay. Has Rudy been to space, though? Oh, yeah. Undoubtedly. Okay. I was just uh, like, he's did been I just make decades, like this? He has spent decades in space at this okay. point. Okay. Yeah. I think he I... was out there on a Martlet ship. Yeah. On a, yeah, the Martlet ships. Oh, hey, Martlet. Good to see me again. <laughs> Good to see me. <laughs> I was on their stream, uh, the pre recorded oh. as a setup. Oh, <laughs> that's funny. Um, but it's familiar, it's dangerous, that's all I really know. Well, yeah, I guess that's, that's all it really yeah. is to it, isn't it? Mm -hmm. When you boil it down so concisely i've spent more time out there than i have on earth wow uh how do you cope when you're out there so far away from everything well, the longer you're out there, the easier it gets. The more detached you become from everything that's here. It's less finding new things and putting more stock in the things around you, the people you brought with you, the ones that have survived this long. You will do your best to keep them alive. That's what we try to do. It's not try to defeat the enemy. It's try to come back for the next day 
Coca-Cola is so good. They'll never see a sunrise again, but it doesn't matter. I uh, I can get that. I can connect with that. Uh, one of the only good things about fighting in no Atmo ex- experience, you can't hear him scream anymore. Oh. That's, um... I didn't just, know that. He's chopping up his mushrooms at this point. <laughs> um... I, I guess that is a good thing. How's Iris doing with what Ioka said? Iris is fine. She's... Not, I don't know if content is the right word. Um, I, I, yeah, I heard that. Good. But she, she's okay. She's and a tough kid. She's a, a tough cookie. Mm-hmm. A little spitfire when you make her angry. Um, but um, you know what? When you have her on your side, really doesn't matter because hell or high water she will make something happen (laughs) that's right so um dangles last necklace but um this one's for her so i'm gonna go um give this to her before we take off all right so so i'll see you so yeah, as soon as that door closes, he's gonna start examining that necklace to figure out how it works. Uh, once I give irises, I will post all of the things for the amulets that I made. I just winked under the eye patch again. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> um, Roxy um, probably doesn't even knock at Iris's door. Uh, she just kind of lets herself in. Um, hey, you awake? What? Mm, now I am. We're leaving in like half an hour. Just to let you know. Oh, I should get up. I should shower. Probably. Um, but before you get ready, um, I made one of these for everyone, but I tried to make yours a little bit better. Um, she, like, hands the amulet over to Iris. Um, it should. (laughs) This is one of the new things with, you know, this, um, it should help you take on more damage, um, before anything actually hurts you. Just in case I'm not there to, you know, stand in front of you like six foot seven, you know, and block your entire existence. <laughs> well, she holds the angel. I've got you here. So, um, thanks. You're welcome. Um, one other thing, um, I might be reading into it, or I might just be thinking too much. Um, and you probably wouldn't ever say anything, but um, Rudy hasn't been in space in a hot second. And the last time he was in space, he was full on in war mode for like 50 years. Um, so I just want to make sure that we take care of him and that he knows that he's not alone. Yeah. I think the hard thing for him, he's going to, I think, be really focused on trying to bring us back. He's lost people. So 
I guess in order for us to make sure that Rudy's okay, we have to just make sure everybody else is. Yeah. Even Jones. I think Jones can take care of himself. He can. But he's not almighty and he's not impervious. Mm-hmm. I mean, oh. I've known him a long time, Iris. I've still gotten a few cheap shots on him, even before this. Mm. Mm. Well, um, I'll stand behind you, and he can be off somewhere doing something else, and we'll all be fine. Okay. You get up. Don't you dare turn back over and fall back asleep. I will expect you in 25 minutes with the ship. Only because you asked. Okay. Um, <clears throat> and with that, uh, Roxy will go do not something before uh, the ship departs because Roxy hasn't had any sleep. Um, and, uh, we'll figure that out. Okay. That seems like a good place to take our mid-show break, and then we'll see if anyone else has pre-liftoff things to do before we go into space. Actually, I don't know, man. I gotta throw a little bit of a wrench into this. We're on a level one hype train right now. Just ended. We just uh, ended. You received a level one hype train. It's over. Yes. <laughs> it's <over> <laughs> God damn. <laughs> and Rosie just screwed us with that by donating a thousand bits. What? No, I did not mean to do any screwing or unscrewing. We can't help ourselves. You just, I, you just said I you just want to summon to the Elder dream. Gods. What? No. Ooh. I didn't summon anything. <laughs> oh my gosh. I'll be back, I guess, since we're... Well, okay. Oh, wait. We're what? not on break yet, Ambrose. We're not on break yet. <laughs> oh, I told you we are. All right. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. All right. I guess we're going on break now. <laughs>
Okay, what else? What is anyone else doing before liftoff? Stuff. Also stuff. Uh, Sophie will distribute her Quicksilver flak jackets. Uh, and if the uh, telepathy group chat works, she will also distribute that. And also the next door app. Sorry, you just gonna okay you have any dialogue you want to go with that or you just do it it's up to you oh um i don't want to take up too much time uh so i'll just um tell people uh hey i made this for you uh here is what it does um with the group chat one uh, i will explain that it will let us stay in contact with each other uh telepathically but it is not strong enough to pick up anything other than surface thoughts so okay i don't want to wear this you don't wear it you drink it it's a potion i i drink quicksilver no you put the quicksilver on I, i'm absolutely not doing that I mean, I'm not gonna hold you down and make you, but it's... I'm not putting mercury in my body. Uh, I have treated it. 
with the magic and alchemy, I am also pointing out that we are going to Mercury. <clears throat> there, Mercury's not made of Mercury. Point of well, order. That's, right. that's, that's a, a goddamn lie. Point of order. Either right, just say I'm not going to put a harmful substance in my body. Yes, I'm not. Lies. I'm not. I'm not a cultivation <laughs> member. So yeah. point of, we're point going of order. to it... Moo, which is a moon of Mercury. We're not actually going to Mercury. I mean, that's I... like saying like I'm going to California when you're going to Disneyland. It's the same place. Iris. Point of order, if Rudy believes it's harmful, it will be harmful to him. Mm. Oh, yeah, okay. I want Fair. this, this, I have titrated this mercury with uh, essence of white lion and red eagle. Don't ask me how I got that. It took a, a lot of fucking work. Uh, I was sore for days, but I have it. And that is what is incorporated into the mercury to make it safe yep. to put on. It has also been enchanted because magic can do that. Wait, so is this the product of animal cruelty? No. Rudy's just gonna buckle on his Kevlar vest. I will so you have the you have the, the Quicksilver and uh and a potion? Two things? Yes. Okay. Uh, um, and like she's also got like a bandolier of other like little stoppered files. Uh, Roxy will take them and they promptly get put in pockets in her jacket. Um, and then she just like puts on the rest of her like armament um, that will like flex and move with her body changes. <laughs> um. Oh, here are some stickers. Each of them, each of you, put these on you when we, when we go out. This will allow you to breathe. They're like nicotine stickers. Ether stickers. Oh no! If we take uh, out of character question, if we take all of these now, they they're gonna work for the scene we're going into, right? Like mechanically, we're good. That is what the mages who created them assume. But the, the GM rolled the dice to see how potent they were, so you know. Okay, but. That's we the as, intent. But we as characters would take them now and well, you just not necessarily put yours on Sophie's, but the other ones, yes. Okay. Sophie some of Sophie's are designed to be used on the fly, but the other ones, yes. Um and I don't know how amulets normally work with mummy, so Really? Okay. I am wearing my amulet. Yes, you would wear the amulet. The same I wear my probably... Sorry. You'd probably put the salve on, but the potions, like in D and D, are mostly used to be meant when meant to be used when necessary. I, I put on Roxy's amulet and I put on Rudy's sticker, and I don't complain about it. <laughs> uh, uh, Roxy also don't put the sticker on until we're about to leave. Like her own amulet that she's just kind of like pinned on to her normal necklace. Um, and she like slaps on Rudy's sticker like a nicotine patch, um, and then just has the potion and salves in in her pockets. Was I not supposed to put it on like that? I say don't put it on till we're going into space, like off the ship into a spot with no air. That'll be fine. I believe. So I have the sticker, the amulet, the multiple potions, all kind of like I'm holding them all. Anyone else? Anything? Iris, Gabriel? Anything anything to contribute to the team? My uh, presence is contribution, thank you. Yes, it is. Understood. Kind of that same sentiment, but a little different. I'm a shield, okay? Perfect. I'll put those into a go bag, I guess, for when we're supposed to put them on. And, uh, yeah. How long is this trip going to take? Who's flying this thing? Excellent questions. Who are you asking? Me, hey, I'm flying. The team? 
As Let's long as I can death. fly it with melee, we'll be good. There's What's only one person that? in this crew that can fly a spaceship properly, and it's not Rudy. Oh, is it me? Uh, no. It is you, Iris. I was actually just checking my sheet for that. <laughs> Gabriel is so disappointed. He's it like, is me. I have three oh, dots in drive. I don't know if that counted or not. I have nope. two dots in Do drive. does not fly spaceships. You must have correspondence to drive spaceships. I also have correspondence. I, yeah, yeah at, same. At at least three. Prefer more. At four. I have three. Yep. I right. want the backup suited. driver. You are best suited to fly the spaceship because also you're a not technocrat, whereas Gabriel would look at this and go, that's this what? Because even with the correspondence sphere, you don't do that kind of magic. Meaning, sure, you could try, but your DCs will be higher and there'll be more paradox. Word. Which which manifests in a spaceship by things breaking down and exploding. The Geller drive fails. Got oh, it. no. That's right. My girlfriend's baller, and she can fly a spaceship. Beep, boop. Beep. Uh, so Iris at this point is wearing something that looks like uh, some sort of black flexible armor that essentially starts at like her chin and goes all the way down. Um, anyway, huh? I said hot. <laughs> and um, that extends down to like gloves, like that cover her entire hands or not fingers or anything like that and uh essentially the idea is that like plug in full body into ship integration whatever for flight okay iris connects herself literally to the ship there are cables going into her head into the back of her neck and into her forearms I have one question. Mm -hmm. Is this like how Iris is when she like plugs fully into VR? No, well, the plugs are in the same place on her body, but this is not what it looks like, no. Well, no, I just, depending on how it is, is how Roxy would treat Iris during this journey. No, you. This, she would be cognizant of the real world in this case. Okay. It's just her reflexes. It's, it's like in... Uh, the Pacific Rim in Pacific Rim. Okay. The drift. Yeah. Now, the ship you're on is actually not even really a ship. It just looks like a really fancy airplane. Like the super advanced space shuttles you always see plans for, but never actually quite get manifested in real life. Only more advanced than that. Smaller, sleeker, thinner. That ship, of course, ferries you into space. Where when you pass through the uh, Panopticon perception filter that exists around just outside of the atmosphere of Earth that hides the fact that there's a giant metal ring going around the entire planet that is one very long round spaceship or space station uh, you dock on one of the many docking bays of the ring and that is where you will make your way to the actual spaceship uh ooh once you pass beyond the perception filter and you actually are in space, the rules of Earth no longer apply. Uh, what that means mechanically is one thing, but roleplay is more important here. So for Drake, Sophie, Gabriel, and Roxy, uh, you're a little woozy, you got a headache, your stomach's a little bit upset, it's like, it's like motion sickness, like you run a plane too long, pressure changed, only it popped your ear a little bit too hard. Things here are a little weird. The artificial gravity and the smell of the air takes a minute to get used to, so you don't feel quite right. You're out of sorts. Uh, it's probably a little intimidating that the lights are super bright, even though there aren't any lights, just the walls glow. The metals and plastics here are not the kind you would find on Earth. They just look weird to you. A lot of octagons and polygons and squares, <laughs> like the inside of the TARDIS everywhere. Uh, Space Marines everywhere, straight up like this is an Aliens movie almost. Are there Space except... Marines here? The Technocracy is here? These are your Space Marines, except for these Space Marines power suits are very gear driven. <laughs> uh, very uh, Newton Chronicles movie style. And uh, this, the ring is very large and it takes a while to get around. You're ferried about on weird, like, it's like a cart 
except it's a little too round and it talks to you even though it doesn't have anything to talk from and it zips you around on like a rail because it's electric the whole the whole the whole thing is really weird for sophie roxy drake and gabriel friars and rudy uh it's just tuesday you've both been here many times you've reported in here occasionally So, you can have the scene while you're zipping around the ring, which will take a while. It takes about 45 minutes to get to the ring. It takes about 40 minutes to pass Space Customs because they're especially uh, grilly for Drake. As a council member of Traditions, they have extra questions for him. And then... Uh, can I try to facilitate that so he can get through faster? You can. How would you want to do that? I mean, if I had dots and status, I would use those. But you would, but you don't. Yeah. I don't. What do you have, though? I've got requisitions. That just means you get cool weapons. <laughs> yeah, not a lot of those. <laughs> secret weapons. Uh, secret weapons are prototypes that either I, work really well or uh, blow up. I don't know I can flash like, these I requiesced you shut the fuck up and let us play. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a we got a mission of the utmost priority on Mercury. Can you hurry this along, gentlemen? If you just want to intimidate them through the veterans' ten thousand yard stare, it does work and cuts about fifteen minutes off the process. I would love to do that if I had it. Okay. No dice necessary. Yeah. I'm like if I'm like I can help him if he needs it. I have intimidation. <laughs> um. That was so scary. Rawr. <laughs> <laughs> Once you get through Space Customs, it's going to be another hour to get to the actual launch deck that has the ship you're going to be on. <clears throat> you can have the scene for a minute. You don't have to roleplay the whole hour, but a few moments of it. <clears throat> is this wall glowing? Yes. Yeah, so, is this... Simultaneously. So, <laughs> where exactly in creation are we? Just outside Earth's atmosphere in a giant metal ring that surrounds the entire planet that no one can see. We're on the ring. Awesome. It's called the ring, yes. Awesome. Uh, so I assume there are like thick glass windows that like look out into space. Or not. However, oh. unless if you ask, Rudy and Iris would know that you can give a command that makes the metal just transparent. But to you, it just looks like walls. Yeah, Sophie will complain like at the lack of portholes or windows. Computer, it's Rudy. We have guests that would like a view. So what happens is the wall becomes transparent and moves with you as you move smoothly, so only the part directly next to you is transparent any one time. It's Thank very you. impressive to non-mechanicus mages. Uh, yeah, so Sophie will just uh, be enraptured not only at the clear metal, but the like space beyond it. Because you, know, you get to see it without all the bullshit light pollution and everything else going on. Are you looking out or in? Towards Earth or away? Away. I know what the blue marble looks like. You also get horrible, horrible vertigo. Because up keeps changing because the ring is moving. <laughs> yeah. The ring rotates around the planet to keep orbit. When... But it's still really cool. When yeah, the... uh, Sophie will just sort of like cope with the vertigo. And, like, at some point, like, take the device out of her pocket. Gabriel, Gabriel, come here, come here. Uh, what, what's wrong? No, nothing's wrong. Stand next to me. I want to take a selfie. I don't do selfies. But do we have cell phones? Uh, yeah, but, uh... Only yours work up here, the two of you. I was going to say, because I thought our time, our technology was pushed back, like, a lot. It is. You remember what car cell phones looked like in the 80s? <laughs> not quite that big, but not quite the flip phones of the mid-90s, either. Somewhere in between. So, I'm thinking MacGyver. Is that uh, what you're... Oh, MacGyver, my God. MacGyver, Star using Trek, a digital com camera? Like, TOS, Star Trek communicators, and when you open it, it's your whole hand. Yeah. Um, yeah, we have VR. A refurbished Victorian camera. Sure, if you want one. 
or you could be cool and just buy a phone from one of our many kiosks on the ring. Oh, I could do that. How many dots of resources do I have? <laughs> Uh, oh, I've got four dots of resources. That should be enough to buy a cute little technocratic phone. Hey, <laughs> get back to that in a second. What were you gonna say, Roxy? When the uh, metal becomes transparent, Roxy has none of this, and she looked down oh, at the uh, the little cart that we're on and just stares at the floor. Because no. she's like, mm mm. One vertigo, not my thing. Uh, Savannah knows how that feels IRL, and I want nothing to do with it in game. <laughs> She's just like. What about Drake and Gabriel? How do you react to deep space? Uh, Gabriel is. This is just another job. Ambrose is panicking inside. Um, yes, but are you staring off into space, or you're like, I don't give a fuck about that, and you're like checking your guns and shit? What does it look like to all the people around you? He's people watching. Okay. You're staring at Sophie while Sophie stares up. <laughs> Drake, what about you? <laughs> um, he would want to go see Earth. Okay, so you look the other way. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, so he's gonna look at Earth and kind of try to take it in, um, because ultimately this is what White and Pinkerton and the evil stepsisters are trying to destroy. So I'm gonna take in getting to see the whole thing. Iris and Rudy, you already have this. Gabriel, Roxy, and Sophie do not, though, unless they decide to glance over. But as soon as you have Rudy open that side of the view, Drake, you immediately experience the overview effect. Mm. Uh, for anyone who doesn't know, that's a thing astronauts get, where it's a sense of awe and clarity that triggers a sense of cosmic interconnectedness, unity, and responsibility the first time you see Earth from space. And that hits you and just covers you in waves, and you can react to that in role-playing. No, I, I, again, I think for him it's going to be a very internalized thing it's like his meditation and the, what, what he's alone kind of been through for a thousand years he's just almost like silently kind of staring off just taken in by it Sophie so you're going to try to ask someone on the space station if you can buy a flip phone or a communicator, whatever we want to call it. Uh, mostly just a camera, because uh, camera. Yeah, because Sophie would very much like to document uh, her first trip out to space. Here's what I need to know from Rudy and Iris. Uh, Sophie specifically is using resources to make this happen, so it's like. Who can I pay to buy a space camera? And you guys know all you have to do is give the right command to the computer and it will take images as you go. But she did just call it them to you. Well, not... She doesn't use that word, but... Point she being, did. I heard she, her she, say it. When did I say technocrat? Before I went... <laughs> she offered to pay, so I mean, you could tell her there's a charge. Depends on if you're both jerks. What do you nah, do? Iris wouldn't... I Iris will tell you that you can just take a she can command it to take an image. That's so cool. Where where can I have it sent? Uh wherever you want. It could be emailed to her. <laughs> yeah. We could just pull one out of the 3D printer in the uh glove that compartment. Too. Yeah, do you want it to be a figurine or an actual like 2D image? Oh, I think she wants an actual camera. Oh, you want a camera? I mean, Why? mostly I just wanted to get a group shot of all of us up here before the terrible things start happening. Peter says, complying, received, and both Iris and Rudy's phones ping. Is I bringing up like the security footage of like us being like everywhere oh, here? No. 
as soon as Sophie said, I want a group shot, it took one from the top of the moving cart. So it th <laughs> there's no blur, but it's got Drake looking down at the planet doing this. And it's got Roxy looking at her feet. <laughs> it's got Gabriel staring at Sophie from behind. I don't know where his eyes are. That's up to him. <laughs> and he's got <laughs> Sophie looking with awe and smiling in the middle of a sentence up directly up. And he's got uh, Rudy glaring at Sophie <laughs> because uh, he swears he heard the word technocrat. And he's got Iris looking very confused. Uh, but it's I, a group I, shot. I blame Bob for anything you heard from this microphone that sounded like technocrat. Um, <laughs> but once Sophie figures that out she is going to do her absolute best to convince everyone to pose for like come on just just stand here and smile it's five seconds out of your life are you capable of smiling rudy did you have those muscles removed <laughs> removed or destroyed what about like, the rest of like you does anyone else not smile uh, she, Roxy will, like, wrap her arm around Iris and do, like, the... Yeah. About Drake and Gabriel. Actively arcane. <laughs> what does that mean? It means, uh, it means if he's unlucky, the computer will pick him up as trying to avoid security protocols. Oh. It's a background that mages and technocrats and mechanicus can have that makes you really hard to see and track. At the level Drake has, it makes it so no one notices you're not actually dead and leave you in the past. Rad. Yeah, at his level of power, like, unless he's actively in your life, you'll forget he exists within oh, like a day. Oh, he's John Courage level. Yeah, he's got five dots. Oh, no. That's bad for you. <laughs> it's bad for me? And most, most of yeah. the world does not know Drake Jones exists. People that Drake hasn't seen in a few weeks don't know Drake exists. If you had an apartment, again, and then the memories return, it's very weird. If you had an apartment, the landlord would keep forgetting. No. Your yes, that's, that's, right. that's right. Your apartment. That's right. Your cat might forget who you have, are. I have also to correct. Every, mm -hmm. I, every single day, I have to stop. Just like click, click. hey, me. Mm. Yeah, I know. You actually just live in Horizon because of that. Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> Uh, Gabriel will give kind of like a half smile. What you get, Sophie, is really is Iris and Roxy being real cute, you smiling, Gabriel trying to smile, Rudy's just staring at the camera, and like there's a blur in the middle where Drake should be. Well, it's just a, a Drake shirt colored blur. No, I'm not. I, I figure that's probably the best I'm going to get. I'm happy with it. If you look at that picture again in an hour, Drake's not in it at all. <laughs> Just an empty spot in the middle. Okay. That's how you know it's legit. Oh, <laughs> uh, imagine ordering at a restaurant with, with his uh, cloak thing or arcane, and then the waiter forgetting to put it in. <laughs> You have to order every five minutes. I mean, <laughs> your order just never arrives. I feel like you would just never be able to go eat alone because you'd be like, look, can you just order the soup and the sandwich for me, please? Well, I think I would just need to, like. Ordering at Panera is impossible. I have a sticky note that I just put on the table, just like. Bowl of soup, please. <laughs> just. Oh, this is weird trash. Crumble, <laughs> throw up. <laughs> Well, you pick up as a curse, not a benefit. <laughs> the hour passes. I also go for some astronaut ice cream. I invite Listen, Gabriel to come it's with me. Dippin' Dots, the ice cream of the future here, okay? What, whatever ice cream they're serving, I'm going to invite Gabriel to get some with me. Um. Now, because... Because you're not with the technocracy. <laughs> because Wait, you are. Hold on. I actually, I do have a... I, this has been brought up a few times. I have a clarifying question. Th is this actually a technocracy no. place the where we are? This is the Technocracy mechanics. or the enemy. I was going to say, aren't the technocracy like... We killed technocrats. The, the hella bad guys in this timeline? Yes. 
Okay, I just wanted to clarify that because I like, was like, I know we've been throwing the word around. Terminator bad guys from yeah, the 90s yeah. style mage here. We're yeah. going to kill technocrats at the moment. Yeah. We are en route to. We yeah. stack technocrat bodies here, okay? I I think the best way Tyler's tried to explain it to us a couple of times how we're different from technocrats, and I think the best the way, thing that makes the most sense to me is uh, we like the traditionalists want to have humanity ascend through imagination as opposed to just science forever. Or the technocrats want to keep the universe a safe place where you won't come to harm, but there's no wonder in it. We want that Jules Verne hollow earth bullshit. <laughs> With the reptilians included. <laughs> So we're, wow, we're doing Hollow Earth and Reptilians. Hollow awesome. Earth is canon to Mage. <laughs> so, because this is not the technocracy and it is the Mechanicus, when you finally get to the viewport that shows the ship you're going to take it, it looks like this. It looks like some kind of brass and iron-covered steampunk nonsense with cannons along the side for space broadsides. And uh, the, 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 the bit on the top and bottom there are, like, legit sails that come out. Heather, did you just send us a fucking attack version of the train from the end of Back to the Future 3? That's actually no, I believe he sent us a sword-class frigate. Yes, that's a Warhammer 40k mechanic. Man, basically. I don't know what the hell a Warhammer is. You're looking at it. it. I love it so much. It does not look like a spaceship. It looks like I a floating think... citadel made that's out of like, brass and metal. That's right. I've cannon. traveled in Battlefleet Gothic. I think in universe this is supposed to be a cathedral as well. In it, it, it would be in the uh, 40k universe, but not this one. Yeah. I swear to God, Tyler, if you but backdoor yes. this, this game into a 40k game, I'm gonna dip long. so fast. Steve. Pick up the tool on your desk. Declare you're going to war. <laughs> okay. So, you can have the scene as you stand around outside getting ready to walk down the long hallway to the ship. What's the name of the ship? I don't know. What do you want it to be, Rudy? Wait, it's our ship? It is now. We're just getting ships up in here? Man, it's good to be Drake There's Jones. There's a whole ship here. Listen, the last ship I named, we named it the Uncursable. <laughs> so It got cursed? It, oh, no. We tried to collect as many curses as possible <laughs> on it. Uh, all right. I, I've got a suggestion. Yes. Uh, this is based on uh, Blackbeard's ship, which was called Queen Anne's Revenge. Uh, Goat Rodeo's Revenge. <laughs> ben, was there an undead parrot on that ship? Yeah. Okay. Ooh, I got it. The no fandy. Wow. That's really <laughs> lame. I, I vote for not that, please. Roxy stretches and has like a little bit of a like spasm and <laughs> kicks Drake <laughs> off the spaceship. <laughs> uh, we could also I do, used my uh, Rudy patch and I'm okay. <laughs> uh, mystery, Reve mystery Revenge. I was thinking Excalibur, but yeah, that's a little more poetic. I was thinking something along the lines of the Nebuchadnezzar because I like the Matrix, but uh, some other angel's name, maybe. Uh, Nebuchadnezzar was a king. Oh, I don't. It was know. also the ship from the Matrix. That's what I said because I like the Matrix. <laughs> mm-hmm. Um, uh, oh, we could call it the Artemis. That's Mercury's Roman counterpart, Greek counterpart. I'm good with that. I like it. And we are hunting the Fandy. Yeah. I just looked at the chat. The lollipop. <laughs> Oh, goodness. What chat? Oh, God, what do we do? Space map? The lollipop. Uh, the lollipop. She's oh. a good ship. God damn it. 
I like the, the Artemis. Sucker? Do we call it the sucker? <laughs> Betty, you're amazing. All right, I think we're good on the Artemis. You are looking at the Artemis. The dick. So, how many crew are on the Artemis? Because the Artemis is not a small ship. It's entirely automated unless you specifically request otherwise. Oh. Is it the same length as a 40k ship? No, but it is about half of that, which is still pretty large. I thought it was like half a kilometer then. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Um... Uh, if do it's we... automated, then meh. Alright. By automated, I mean half-sentient constructs walk around and do things. Ah, Would we it. call them some sort of servant? Like a serve i tor? Mm -hmm. Serve dot i dot tor, yes. Are there any offensive capabilities on this ship? Those giant rows of broadside cannons, they work. Okay. Danger, Will Robinson. Awesome. So, ice cream? Yeah, we have a gooseberry flavor. You'll want to buy it before you get on the ship. The only ones that come on the ship are trout flavored. What? Excuse me? Did You'll want to. Trout flavor? Yes. Yes. yes and it's did. actually frozen yogurt. Why? Nutrients? I don't know. Um. No, I'm okay. Though I would be interested in the trout flavored ice cream thing, but. I mean, I guess you could also get just plain flavored uh, I mean, frozen yogurt. Meats are really only Not taste, vanilla. So plane well okay is it earth trout or space trout because there's a difference space trout is a thing i mean unless someone was blind to me all those years ago what <laughs> i i worry about you sophie i'm not gonna lie So, I'm going to suggest no additional crew, as I don't think we want to bring anyone else on this mission. Uh, we should be able to do this ourselves, and let's keep anyone else out of danger. Oh, I'm just worried about everyone else fucking up, so definitely just keep it to us. Alright. How long is the trip from here to Mercury? 15 weeks. That's what cryo sleep is for. 18 weeks? 13. 13? We cryo sleep for 13 oh, weeks? Only yeah, we're traveling better. an astronomical unit. It's not going to be. Oh, I don't like the idea of cryo sleep. Why not? You can't be vigilant during cryo sleep. You. Your sleep. At least with regular sleep, people can. Take rotation? Eh. Yes, but we have these serve eye tours. Yeah, but what if what if the Nefandi that we are after somehow know what we're doing and have sabotaged things? Gabriel, would it make you feel better? If I didn't cry out of sleep. Didn't mean. It would be unfair to ask you to do that alone. I mean, that's Why? kind of what that's I'm good at. That's literally my purpose. Also, and the computer could say this, or Rudy, it doesn't really matter. Not an option. Because the ship isn't shielded against the sun that you're going to get closer to than just about anyone ever has, except in the cryosleep pods. 
awesome. because it's an immense power uh, pull to do that. So it only pops up radiation shields when you're actively moving around. When you're in travel mode, it does not. You would die from radiation poisoning in days. What about when we dock? Oh, yeah. Basically, from the moment cryosleep exits, which is a full day out, so you have time to prepare, you'll have the radiation shielding. It lasts for 30 hours before it has to recharge. Also, we don't in have other like, words, the food limited supplies. quintessence. That's also true, yes. Well, or water. Okay. Look, if it makes you feel better, Gabriel, just get in the fucking pod. Wait, how does it... How would that... Now it's not your choice. Get in the fucking pod. So there's dialogue going on in Gabriel's head with his avatar. It's like, oh shit, closed in spaces. Fuck, 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 fuck. I... The, av the avatar would tell you, you won't even know it's a closed in space. What's the problem? And then the sounds of toking. Well, no, because cause OG Gabriel with, you know, the, the box and Lacey... Oh, if you're saying, would your years. avatar say that to you? No, oh, gee, the avatar would not. Because the avatar might have been claustrophobic, but avatars only manifest when it's necessary. So unless this Gabriel is freaking out, it would hide itself. Like, an avatar won't show up and make your shit worse. It shows up and tries to make your shit better. Sometimes it's an asshole about it. However, mm. if you, this Gabriel, is claustrophobic, then yeah, it's going to be a train wreck of everything inside of you freaking out. <laughs> Oh, oh no, this Gabriel just doesn't like the idea of not having one of our group watching over. Yeah. So then it would probably be more like, or Avatar, where are you? No reply. I'll see you when we're not in the tube. <laughs> At this point, Iris gets a little defensive. She's like, do you think the Mechanicus has been infiltrated like do you not trust us oh no that's not it i mean but anyone can be infiltrated well regardless we don't have a choice uh okay i'll i'll talk to gabriel gabriel while you are correct yeah. to be concerned that train of thought leads to paranoia and accusations of everybody. We trust who we can and deal with what comes. We'll be okay. Right? Because what we yep. believe comes true. Yep. We will be You're okay. Right. Gabriel, I've done this hundreds of times and never had an issue. Nope, nope, you're all right. I will I will go lay down in the box of doom. It's cool. So, so, I want he'll, Gabriel he'll to get in the box and us get him closed, and as soon as it's, like, closed and ready, I'll turn to Rudy and just be like, we've done it a hundred times? At least. Hmm, only takes one fuck up, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> 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 I'll take a second here to explain a lot of people in this game, and the audience might be new to Mage. A one dot avatar isn't even really an avatar, it's just gentle nudges and signs, like if you watch our Solemn Veil game, like how Gabriel's magic power works, uh, Ambrose's character's magic power works. Should I go north and the leaves blow in the direction you should go? Two dots of an avatar, uh, vivid dreams, subconscious urges, maybe precognition about events. Just gut feelings, a lot of deja vu. At three dots, it can manifest as some kind of force of nature, or in the case of Gabriel, an entity, because it's a cool backstory element we added for time travel. But it doesn't really appear unless it's really needed. It's like it doesn't appear constantly on demand. Four dots, it's a living, breathing entity with a personality that is almost always bugging you and probably drives you a little crazy. And at five dots, uh, it's your best friend that's always with you and never goes away. 
That's uh, Rudy, and also I have the Merit Manifest Avatar. And that can happen, too. Uh, also, you can buy up Avatar like any other background with experience, as long as you're role-playing constantly trying <laughs> to communicate with it like Gabriel is doing. 2xp, one dot. Which can be useful, because it's how you get GM cheats. That's how you say, Mr. GM, what do we do next? The Avatar can tell you. However, it will also pull you into Seekings, which can be weird. Alright, I'm totally not going to spend my next XP on taking my avatar to four, so I can just have a saber-toothed tiger hanging around. It also lets you hold more quintessence. Mm. Yes. Uh, well, Iris gives Roxy a kiss and climbs in the pod. Sleep well. I'll see you in 13 weeks. I've got 30, we've got 30 hours before the radiation shielding kicks off, right? Yep. Yeah, I'm going to prep uh, our meal when we get out. But also, I can communicate, can I communicate with my avatar while we're in prior sleep? Funny you should mention that. Yes, yes you can. Why do you ask? I want to communicate with my avatar while we're in prior sleep. Okay. Uh, what else would you like to do before getting on the ship? I thought we were already on the ship. <clears throat> or while you're exploring the ship, getting ready to get in the cryo chamber, yeah, any of that period. Uh, maybe check our if we have an arms locker. Oh, yes. You have an armament room. Is there anything fun? Define fun. Secret weapons fun? Or requisitions yes. fun? Yes. Giant laser gun that blew up a hole in like 1212. Uh, requisitions, you can ask for specific things. Secret weapons, I'll just give you something oh. interesting for next session. Oh, I'm just going to open up this technocracy book real fast. Anarchist book, sir. Well, yeah. Um, Roxy will just kind of like look around to see if there's any like this is really Iris's thing but like any like the data banks that they could potentially tap into um all over the place um with obviously she already knows where we're going um but like since it's going to be automated to the thing, like where they're stopping out, like outside the moon, um, and if this ship has any extra details on the base that was taken over, um, any reconnaissance that might have been done since the takeover, that type of thing. It spits out a very complex answer to where you're, it's going to hold in place for 30 hours. Because Mercury has a 3-2 uh, spin orbit resonance. Spin orbit resonance is a really weird orbit because it's tidally locked with the sun. It does weird shit. <laughs> uh, it rotates on its axis exactly three times for every two revolutions around the sun, which is 88 days. So basically, in about six months, it only rotates on its axis three times, as opposed to our planet, which is very different. So that means that city of brass that we were talking about earlier in the mission brief, most of the time phases away from the sun. Occasionally faces it, and they had to put up heat shields. And then most of the time, it's facing away again. That's why it's eternally on fire, because the shields collapsed when they were attacked, when it was facing the sun. What that means is your ship has to do a really weird dance to stay out of sight of the invisible moon. Shouldn't. It's kind of just like coordinates that shift in a weird manner in a particularly almost round but not quite ellipse area near the moon. Since it's tightly locked, wouldn't there be like one point on the uh, planet or spe uh, astronomical body that would just be in this nice little temperate zone between at all times? Yes. Like it basically exactly on that axis? Yep, but that's not where they built the oh, city press. <laughs> that's really stupid of them. 
That's where we would build a base. <laughs> uh, the invisible moon is only invisible because of magic. It's still there. So, because the Order of Hermes uh, built the base there, they know what the orbit of the moon is, unless then if Andy figured out how to change the orbit of an entire planetary body. So, that's how they're guessing where you need to go. You can't actually see it. Uh, however, you could double check when you arrive by, you know, doing math science stuff and checking for gravitational anomalies where a very large piece of rock is moving around. Okay. Um, Roxy is going to make a couple of notes because uh, she would put a pretty hefty bet uh, that they have figured out how to do that. Um, because why the fuck not? Um, and so she's going to make a note for Rudy and Iris to figure figure that shit out when they're a day out from the planet. If that is brought up, then yes, Drake and Rudy, you would also assume. And if any of you fucked with that. Because you would have. Yeah. Um, so, like, <laughs> I don't know why, but I feel like Roxy would have post-it notes, because Savannah always has post-it notes, so, like, she, like, puts a post-it note on the terminal that's, like, right next to Iris's uh, sleep chamber. <laughs> the like figure out where the moon actually is because planet fuckery and slaps it on her terminal so fun notes just for your reference mercury is the most cratered planet in our solar system it has wrinkles and it's the second densest planet interesting which would mean, for your case, if you have to go down to the surface, it's going to be a hell of a ride to get anywhere because of even more craters than the moon. Uh, super dense means ridiculous gravity. And wrinkles. I wonder what that means. A wrinkly brain. Anyway. The more wrinkles, the smarter it is, right? I'm sure that's the case. Um... Rudy found the armory. I can't think of anything else to be nosy about. Iris Drake, Sophie Gabriel. Uh, huh? Take a look at whatever hookup system Iris will be using to do her shit when she gets there. The ship does actually have the ability for someone to fly it. It is mostly automated, but you can take manual control. It's automated by a semi-sentient machine in consciousness. I take a moment to say hi. Hal says hi back. Hi, Hal. Greetings, Iris. Does that movie exist in this timeline? Of course. That's why they called it Hal. Fuck. <laughs> they even almost got the voice identical, but they made it just a little different. For copyright purposes? Yep, exactly. You'll take care of us while we're asleep, right? Of course I will, Iris. We will be perfectly safe. Thanks, Hal. You're welcome, Iris. Have a wonderful That's trip. Um, I'm 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 not doing much of anything. I'm just prepping, ready to go, but nothing specific. Okay. Gabriel and Sophie. I mean, we know part of what Gabriel's doing, trying to figure out what to do when everything goes to hell because he's convinced that's what's going to happen. But beyond that, uh, Sophie is going to uh spend whatever amount of time she's allowed, just like exploring the spaceship like oh my god this is so cool oh this is the best oh look at the doors look how the doors work that's the best um and uh yeah i i don't think she has any relevant skills uh that could help her evaluate uh if the ship is about to explode or not uh so she's just going to enjoy being in space until she has to go down 
Okay. Now, after that... Oh, go ahead, Gabriel. I see you on mute. Uh, no, I was just going to say I'm just looking to make sure that there's some way to deal with things if they go wrong during cryo sleep. There is a... It's not really an eject button, but there's an emergency latch release if you were to wake up and be trapped inside. So that, you know, that horror movie thing where you just suffocate and the tube doesn't happen. <laughs> So, like, you can essentially kick the window out on demand. Also, if anything goes wrong, the ship wakes you up. Unless the ship is evil. Correct. That's not evil. It's named Hal. Yeah, did you ever see that movie, Iris? Rosie hasn't, so no. <laughs> I'm sorry. I can't do that, Gabriel. Just kidding. Um... Ha, what's the med bay look like on this thing? Uh, two trauma units, which are self-guiding, self-repair trauma units, you know, like from the new Alien movies. So only two of us can get majorly injured. Got it. Or can only fix two of you at a time. And then it has uh, ten actual beds. And then it also has room for up to 30 uh, casualty but only two major units, only ten beds. The rest are just like... So when I say bed, I mean in the Mechanicus sense where it's a full... It's a chamber where, like, you can be deradiated and it will, like, stop the bleeding and it's a little fully automated and there's, like, 30 just regular lay down on the metal board and don't die. Yep. And then the fully automated chambers seal around you and just fix you. Got it. Makes you think that you could probably have a maximum actual living crew here of uh, 42. Perfect number. Right? Pick that for no reason whatsoever. Done. Okay. Is anyone going to buy up Avatar since we just talked about it before the next session? Speak now or forever hold your peace. Can Wait, when can we do that? You can announce you're going to do it now and then do it between sessions. I will be. Yeah, you know, why not? Can I go to what six? Will that make your new number, Rudy? Six. I mean, you can't buy it up anymore. Then. <laughs> What's that make your new number, Iris? Um, Iris wasn't going to. I don't. I, know. I, I didn't number. raise my hand. I, I I need to think about all of that stuff. Like Iris didn't raise her hand. I'm, I'm very What's your current number. Uh, currently... It'll be bottom left. Uh, three. Um, yeah. three dots, but, um, I don't know how much XP we're currently at. I haven't three. spent any of it yet. Three now, it'll be five by next week. By the end of tonight. Well, plus whatever you had originally. Like, you didn't get wiped out when you switched realities. So if you already had any, which you probably I mean... did... I, I did, but um, I didn't spend any of it, so I figured I would just ask how much you had given us at that point. Uh, you would have had... 15. Math is hard. 15, counting last session. I had enough to put Prime from 2 to 3, which is a lot. I don't know. I I don't know. I'm in love with the idea of my avatar being able to bug me. Okay. <laughs> uh, what's that going to put yours at, or what is it now, Drake? Four, and I'm not I'm not bumping it. And Gabriel. Uh, so mine are currently at three. It's going to be four. Yes. And Sophie? Uh, mine is currently at two, and I plan to buy it up to three. And Roxy? It's currently at three, and I'm unsure how far I'm going to bump it. Okay. Uh, we will consider it four for the purposes of why I need to know, but you can go five if you want. So, 
As this session comes to a close, the reason I ask is when cryosleep closes its cold, loving hands around you, you all awaken to your own seemings that we will roleplay next session. Seekings, as you move, and we will roleplay next session where your mind travels within itself to teach you more about reality and magic. Yay. The thing we have not done on this show yet. Uh, this will be fun. Yeah, what could go wrong? With Especially for Gabriel. Uh, I'm just worried about all the other things that are sprinkled into my DNA now. Fine. Fine. So, this we're going to draw this session to a close so I can prepare Seekings for all of you for next week. Uh, we will do them one at a time, and I will have roles for everyone who's not involved in the Seeking to play. So it'll be interesting. It'll be fun. It'll be like, great. It'll be a good time. I call Dev on Rosie. Anyway. Oh my god, that's me. Oh uh, no, I haven't, I haven't, I haven't announced oh, anything shit. yet. Okay. <laughs> it was an awkward silence, so I was like, oh god. Yeah. Rosie's like, I'm ready to go. Tonight's chapter comes to a close, and we return to our sleepy mundane lives. We hope you return next week to continue this tale with us. But until then, there are many other fine adventures the cast and crew of Orpal Tales can provide you with. On Mondays, Curse of Strahd revamped at 7 Eastern, followed by Solemn Veil, uh, Silice Cider at 11 p.m. On Tuesdays, Dark Sun at 7 p.m. Eastern. On Wednesdays this week, a one-shot run by our very, very own Twin Dad at 8 p.m. On uh, Thursday this week, nothing at all, but coming very soon, Starfinder at 9 p.m. Eastern. On Fridays uh, at 7 Eastern, Masks of Gnarly Thotep. Hopefully they'll be able to return this week and actually face off with the cult in London. And Cult Divinity Lost at 11 Eastern. On Saturdays, Pathfinder 2E Reign of Winter at 7 and the finale of Red Opera at 11. Nope, nope, I messed that up. And the beginning of Cult Divinity Lost Session 1 at 11. I also messed up the time for Silize Cider. That starts at 10.30, not 11. Keep doing that. And finally, we return to this. Mage of the Ascension at 9 on Sundays. I myself can be found next running Curse of Strahd as they finally get to take out the undead and make their way into Barovia as they are completing the prequel part of the story. Seekers of Ascension, tell us who you are and where you can be found on our show and the cool things you do in other places. Okay, fine. Hey everybody, I have been Gabriel Hargrave for you this evening. I now return to being Ambrose, who you can find on the interwebs is Am Changeling, and you can find me playing again. No, I don't know. Tomorrow. Tomorrow. With 7 your p.m. With my sister. Uh, and then after that, Solemnville, you know, with the stabby metal belts and some th thick apples. Right there, thick. Anyway. Hello, my name is Steve. You can find me on the internet at Voodoo Arcade. My pronouns are he, him. Tonight I played Drake Jones, Order of Hermes, Sword Mage. Uh, the next time you will find me will be... No. no, no. Friday. For a uh, continuation of... Uh, Colt, where I play an abomination. And we're going to go blow up a power station. It's going to be fun. Also coming real soon. Steve's going to lead the way on Friday nights. Yeah. As we play, they came from Camp Murder Lake. If there's not like a pun every 10 minutes, I will riot. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Are you done? You... I am. Sticky. Okay. Hi, I am Savannah. You can find me online at Miss Miss Emo Fox. Tonight I played Roxy, our uh, Avignon for the traditionalists. Um, you can find me tomorrow for both Curse of Strahd, playing the lovely sister of <clears throat> Mr. Ambrose over here, uh, as well as the twin sister <laughs> to Kay, who plays Axel in Solemn Vale. Um, also, a little sneak peek, if people are really nice, um, I might play Garnet on Saturday and bring her back for another cult adventure. Hello, uh, my name is Rachel. You can find me, Stolen Fires, pretty much everywhere on the internet. 
uh, as far as other places you can find me, I will be here tomorrow for Solemn Vale. I will be here on Tuesday for uh, Dark Sun. And then, uh, let's see. I will be back here on a Friday for Masks of Nyarlathotep. And we just recorded our session zero. There were a couple gremlins, but it turned out real well. Uh, for Call of Cthulhu, Horror on the Orient Express. And if you are one of our Patreon patrons at $20 or higher, you will get access to session zero and all subsequent shows. And hello, I am Rosie, regular size mom. You can find me on Twitter at mom underscore size and on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok as odd duck dice. I make dice because they're pretty. And I now have an entity number, which means a shop will be coming soon. Woo. Uh, so keep an eye on that. Um, and you can find me here uh, most Thursdays. Uh, but you have to wait two Thursdays to see me on Thursday, where I'll be playing an Envoy in the Starfinder game, because I decided we needed a talkie character so we didn't just shoot everybody. Um, and then you can find me here on Sunday doing more of this. So, hope you tune in and have a lovely week. Hi, Ben, Big Dad here, Chief Human of Big Dad Industries, and I just tried to swat a fly with zero depth perception. That's my life right now. Um, I've been Rudy your artificer of the mechanicus i think that it is um former son of ether uh, and i'm very excited for next week uh, you can catch me here or on the page of uh, the horror of the order express patreon game uh my character is very interesting i think he best described as a piece of shit uh would you agree other people that were there for that He's fine. Nothing shady uh, at all. I, 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 um, I, nah, uh, no opinion. <laughs> so yeah, uh, if you if you can do it, it it'll be a fun ride. Choo choo. Excellent. And on that note, we leave you to your own seekings for another week. Have good dreams, and always rock out to synthwave. Have good night. <laughs>